I was born on March the 1st, 1949 in Dallas, Texas under the name Gary Lynn Dobbins. Both my parents were alcoholics. My father was a child molester. By that I mean he would take cigarettes and extinguish them between my legs. This was the kind of environment that I grew up in. My mother practiced prostitution. Through a series of events, I was given up for adoption. So in this new environment, my name was changed. All of our needs were provided and many of our heart's desires were granted unto us. On a regular basis, I was taken to the Hillcrest Southern Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. I heard a simple gospel message. I went forward. I talked to the pastor and I understood and I received Jesus Christ into my life. I remember being raised in Dallas and then because of economic reasons my family had to leave and they moved to an area called Farmington, New Mexico that borders on the four corners of Colorado, Utah, Arizona and New Mexico and there I grew up. I came to understand that I had a talent that I was endowed by from God. It was ability to sing. I love to sing. It seemed like I could just kind of get lost in singing and expressing myself through music. And God blessed me. And I won a scholarship after going through high school, winning all state honors for three consecutive years in a row. It was December the 23rd, 1966. My little sister and I were returning home from college. We were about a block from our home. We were singing Silent Night, Holy Night when suddenly she let out a blood-curdling scream. I turned to see what was the matter. There was a horror expression etched on her face and then I felt a sharp, searing pain surge across my lower facial extremities. I remember my jaw cracking and popping. It was as though my head just exploded in a million pieces. Later I was to learn, we ran into the back of a 10 ton record truck that was on uh, the uh, edge of the highway. It was illegally parked. It was over the uh, limitations to be where it was parked. And it had been in the oil field and it was saturated completely with oil. We couldn't see it. It'd just be like driving your automobile into this solid brick wall. It squashed our car like an accordion. My life passed before my eyes. I remember slipping out of my body much as you would discard and remove your clothing and lay it aside. There was pain for an instant then all pain was eliminated. I rose up above the car, was able to look back down and witness and observe some of the things that were transpiring on the earth below. And then I was caught up in a swirling massive funnel shaped cloud and there was a bright light that engulfed me. It grew brighter and brighter and I walked down this pathway that became uh, 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 wider and wider and about midway I began to hear angelic voices what I believe to be angels as they were singing you've never heard anything until you've heard angels singing in chorus to their creator I heard them as they were singing worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory power dominion wisdom be unto thee O Lord God forever and ever amen and amen and with that reverberating off the walls of my soul I remember this cloud opened up wide I remember looking and I remember seeing a beautiful celestial city a golden city City suspended in space located towards the north. I began to walk up a green grassy hill. I remember literally looking back and, and uh, the uh, grass came up through my feet and there were no indentions where I had just previously stepped. I remember seeing the layers of the city. There were 12 foundations of the city. I am telling you that it would take us 
500 million light years according to scientific fact to reach the farthest star that man has ever been able to see with the most powerful telescope that he's been able to invent and heaven is out beyond those regions. It's out beyond all those galaxies. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. I actually did some research. I discovered that it was 2.7 billion cubic miles. That's over 15 times the size of planet Earth. It's 2,250,000 square miles at its base of perimeter. It's over 780,000 stories high. That's 300 miles high. From one end of Houston, Texas to the other end of Houston, Texas is approximately 60 miles. It takes you about an hour to go across our vast city. Imagine the expanse and magnitude of this place called heaven and there's enough room to comfortably accommodate 100,000 million people. That's more people than have ever lived on planet earth but Jesus just simply said in my father's house are many mansions. Amen. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I have gone, Jesus said, to prepare a place for you. I saw giant uh, gates of solid pearl. I witnessed each of these layers, these different foundations with multifaceted color of stars uh, uh, or stone stones rather, uh, embedded upon them. And just the bottom foundation itself was just a diamond uh, uh, layer. And it was just a magnificent place. It's more literal to me than Disney World or Disneyland. And I've been to both. I remember entering in, walking down a corridor. I was greeted by a friend of mine who had died in a previous accident, which answers in my mind, will we know one another in heaven? Well, the answer is obviously, yes, we will. We will know one another. Matthew 8, 11 tells us that. Well, I communicated with my friend. And he took me into a room that looked like a library. We walked in and it was decorated as such. And there were giant volumes of books on the shelves. He walked over, picked one of them out. It had my initial on it. And he flipped through a vast array of pages until he found my name and he showed me where my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Paid in full by the blood of Jesus. I saw my name recorded there. And then he closed it, put it back up, and took me and we went out into an arena, I would say the magnitude of the Astrodome. And there were different levels and there were different areas where people were worshiping God with different responses. There were people that were dancing, there were people that were singing, I saw people praying, and, and there was just a lot of joy and excitement and, and uh, uh, laughter and, and uh, uh, enthusiasm there in that vast arena. All kinds of musical instruments, every sound. There was no discord there, but there was just wonderful praises going forth to the throne room of God. I saw what represented the Holy Spirit, seven lampstands with their lamps lit, which represented the presence of the Holy Spirit. I looked up and I saw God's throne. I saw above God's throne a resplendent aura of rainbow colors of which I cannot describe to you adequately. They were much more intense and in depth than the colors here upon this earth. And from God's throne flowed a beautiful crystal body of water that the Bible calls the river of life. I saw angels. I saw angels as they would take golden bowls and they would carry them up and there was like a, like a mist. The light was bright but not blinding around God's throne. And they would take this, this watery substance right directly to the throne room of God. And I asked my friend, I said, what is it? He said, that's the tears of all the saints on the earth below. They were collected by angels and they were taken directly to the throne room room of God on behalf of those who had shed them. And then I saw what appeared to be like dry ice. And it was just flowing forth out of these golden bowls that were being 
being carried by angelic beings into the very presence of God Himself. I witnessed to this. They would go up and the singing, there was lightning and there was flashing and, and there was sound of praise and worship such as you cannot even begin to comprehend. And I witnessed and saw it. And uh, uh, I asked my friend, what is it? And my friend said, that's the praises of all the people on the earth below and in heaven above that are being collected to be taken directly to the throne room of God on their behalf. God inhabits your praises. Amen. God responds to your praises. While we were praising him a few months ago, there were angels here. Those angels were going around and they were collecting our praise and they were taking them directly to the throne room of God upon our behalf. I was taken by my friend down into this beautiful crystal clear body of water. There was actually no bottom to it, but I could reach down and pick up golden nuggets bigger than my fist. I could pick up all kinds of precious jewels. I have a ring here that my family has given me that have all their birthstones on it, and those jewels are all a multifaceted array of colors, but as I would hold those diamonds, those jewels in my hand, they would filter through my finger and the light would flash upon them producing a prism and effect of colors again of which I cannot describe to you. If you've got a problem with prosperity, you are going to be miserable in heaven. I was in the water and the water began to rise until the water consumed me entirely. In the water, completely covered, I could transmit thoughts to my friend and communicate with him and he with I without uh, uh, verbal uh, words being exchanged between between us. I remember the water receding. I remember stepping out on the other side. I remember seeing a whole host of people from every tribe, nationality upon the face of this earth that were assembled and gathered and they were singing collectively all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, crown him Lord of all. And I asked my friend, I said, why are they singing a song that we sing in our Baptist hymnal on earth, hymn number 132? Why are they singing that in heaven and my friend responded by saying to me all songs of the spirit originate in heaven and then they are dropped down into the heart of someone who will be receptive and will birth it out I remember in heaven hearing for the first time many of the little songs that we sing in our circles at this present hour. It'd be years later that I'd hear them on earth. The first time I heard the chorus, He is Lord, He is Lord, and hallelujah, was when I was in heaven in the presence of the host of redeemed saints that were worshiping and praising God. There were always shouts down by the river. People always crossing over. And uh, people were always coming in and they were being met by friends and loved ones who were acclimating them to the city. I heard shouts and I looked over and there was a group of people that were looking down and they were cheering people on the earth below. They were literally praying for people and encouraging people in the spirit and they witnessed and observed and I was able to watch this myself from the place where I was and I saw a man come and get born again. He was an alcoholic. He got set free, gloriously born into the family of God and they went and found this man's mother who was already in heaven and they said to her in song rejoice, rejoice your son is coming home again and all of heaven erupted. I mean there was great joy in the presence of the angels as just one person on earth was redeemed. Well, I witnessed it. I saw the prayers of people on earth below as they were sent up. I saw as God dispatched the angel, as the angel went over, got the signed miracle, made his way fighting through principalities and powers back to the recipient on the earth below. You remember it took 21 days to answer Daniel's prayer. And I saw people abruptly miss their miracle by negating it with their own confession, saying, 
saying it's not my time, it must not be my moment, it must not be for me right now at this time. God must not intend for me to receive my manifestation. And they would stop the miracle power from being released in their life and the angel would have to turn around because of their refusal to accept the miracle and go back up to that room and put their miracle in this room that had a little sign on the outside that said unclaimed blessing. I saw angels tending to what looked to me like little globs of clay. I asked my friend what it was. He said it was aborted babies. Every aborted child has an angel assigned to it to create and form and fashion it into the person that God intended it to be. Amen? There are teenagers that died through various accidents and each angel was assigned to those teenagers. And then I remember going to the mansion, the mansion I'll spend all eternity in. I went in that mansion as I walked up and entered through the little gate and, and, and walked up and went into what appeared to be like a living room area. And there were three buckets of paint sitting there. I noticed immediately there was no furniture. It was not ready for occupancy. My friend who was taking me on this tour reached down, dipped his hand and threw some paint on the wall. Suddenly a beautiful design appeared before my eyes. My nature, I picked up the whole bucket and flung it. And there was a floral arrangement with, with a scent that emitted as I began to smell the aroma that was coming forth. When I came out, I walked on a street that was pure, solid gold. For my friend told me that it wasn't ready for me to occupy and that I had to leave. It ladies is like the Johnson Wax commercial. You can look all the way through it. It's transparent but it's solid pure gold. I saw flowers with faces. I saw them as they were singing and worshiping and praising God. I saw trees as they were clapping and keeping time to the rhythm of the music as the angels and all the heavenly orchestra was worshiping and praising the Lord. And so so then I had an encounter with Jesus. I got to see Jesus. He stands about six foot one. He has olive complexion, beautiful white flowing hair. He has a white beard. He has beautiful blue eyes. Now I don't care what artist description you've seen, I'm telling you, I've seen him. He has the most beautiful blue eyes you have ever looked into and yet they are like fire. And they can penetrate you and they can just purge you and look all the way through you. I saw where they drove the nails into his hands. They drove them right there into his hand. I saw where the nail went into his feet to secure him to the cross. And at any moment while he was hanging there to pay the eternal price to satisfy God's court of justice, he could have called 10,000 angels. They'd have wiped this planet into oblivion. Don't you ever let anyone convince you that they killed Jesus. No mortal man killed Jesus. He said, I lay my life down. He said, I got the power to lay it down. And then he had the power to raise it up again that we might follow too in newness of life and resurrection power with him. I saw him. He began to speak to my heart. He began to write upon the tablets of my heart through communication. I'm there in Jesus' presence. Suddenly, my friend says to me, you've got to go back. She's using that name. All eternity rolls back. There on the earth below, I see my crumpled body in the car. They had been working over me for 20 minutes earth time. Oxygen ceased to flow to my brain. Some people think that I am a little warped or distorted and uh, that I can't function normally, but I can that I have the mind of Christ and all my facilities operate as God has ordained them. But my sister is in the car. I've been pronounced dead. I've been dead according to the doctor that arrived there at the scene to minister under us for 20 minutes. They're working on her. They're trying to save her for she's severed an 
artery. Blood is shooting out. Thank God they were able to save her and she's well and ho at this present hour and also serving the Lord. But she began to pray, Jesus, 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 he's my baby brother, please Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm here to tell you, there's a name that's above every name that man can speak. It's the name that causes every demon in hell to quite can quiver. It causes believers to stand at alert and at attention. And the angels are dispatched when those believers will speak that name in faith to release and receive their miracle from heaven. I was there. I was in the presence of the Lord. Jesus ushered and sent his angels to put me back into my body and in a moment I was escorted back and there they noticed life signs. They rushed me to the hospital. They began to do extensive repair work. I was uh, totally uh, uh, busted apart in the accident. My jaw was broken in three separate places. The turn signal indicator snapped in two. Its jagged edge crisscrossed my face and slice my vocal cords. My vocal box was literally disintegrated and tore apart. A big section of my nose was totally ripped and shredded and tore apart. And I was in this position and uh, I heard the doctor the next morning say to me, you're never going to be able to speak again, let alone be able to sing. Now about a year ago, it was about October of last year, I came through this area preaching with Brother Johnny. I had a severe growth that had come up upon my throat. Primarily it was just an infection, but many people were already diagnosing it, saying that it was cancer. And so I wound up going to the hospital. When I arrived at the hospital, they did x-rays. They took these x-rays and the doctor came out and the doctor called all the nurses together and the doctor came in and the doctor asked me some questions. He said, how do you speak? I said, well, I just opened my mouth and I use my lips and I just communicate. He said, there's no way that you can do that. I said, why? He said, because you don't have a voice box. And he said, your vocal cords have been severed. A nurse, even in Pastor Johnny's church this morning, verified these x-rays to be authentic. She said she knew from her experience that it was true, that she could see it was not there. You see the vocal cords sliced. You see the jaw broken in several places. Up above is where the doctor spoke to me and said, do you know that you have a hole in the middle of your head? I said, well, I have been told that by some. And uh, he said, there's no way that you can communicate. I remember six other doctors telling me that very same thing. But I got a different opinion. Amen. Dr. Jesus said said I could. I remember when Jesus walked into my hospital that room after I'd heard that song on the radio. He touched me. He touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me. And he made me whole. And Jesus walked right in that hospital room. Walked right over. Put his hands right on my throat. I looked deep into those beautiful blue eyes. He smiled. And then he just passed out of the room. Oh by the way honey he didn't come in via the door. He didn't leave by the door. He is the door. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he left and he walked out. And about that same moment, a little nurse walked in and said, Good morning, Mr. Wood. How are you doing today? I hadn't spoken in nine months because I could not speak. You can see here that I cannot speak. This is what doctors say I cannot do. But there, Jesus had just touched me. And when Jesus comes and touches you, there's nothing that you can't do. Everything changes in your life. And the little nurse walked in and greeted me. And I threw up my hands and said, Praise the Lord. Lord, I've been 
healed and she dropped the tray and she went running outside and she got the doctors and the doctors came running back in and the doctors began to examine me. All my teeth were knocked out in that accident. I don't have time to share a whole lot more tonight, but let me try to sum it all up. I have been privileged in my life to lead my alcoholic father to Jesus Christ. I was able to preach the gospel and cause my dead to hear the gospel and turn and receive Jesus. I preached my father's funeral. I know my dad is going to be in heaven. I know he's there waiting for me when we will be together again. Uh, not As a family here on earth, it was not normal, but it's going to be a wonderful reunion when we get to heaven. I've had the opportunity to preach my mother's funeral. My alcoholic prostitute mother was in a service where I conducted my own brother's funeral who was a hell's angel who defied God, who killed people, who would turn from me and say to me, don't tell me about this Jesus that you're serving. I don't want to hear about it. And then he'd get me aside and he'd say, listen Bubba, one day I'll get things right with the man in the sky. But he said, don't embarrass me in front of my friends as I've traveled around the United States now. I'm 40, I just turned 46 years of age the other day. I have met people who ra rode with my brother in uh, the Hell's Angels gang. I was preaching that funeral. I preached it. I was sorrow in my heart because I knew I would never see my earthly brother again because one day he'll stand at the great white throne judgment to give an account of his life before Almighty God for the deeds of the flesh that he was involved in. And I stood there in front of many of his contemporaries and a revival spirit broke out. One of them that was there that was in the same raid that he was in where my brother was killed he slipped to his knees began to weep and cry and gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ I came right down to I came to my mom and I said mom you have a choice I said you will spend eternity with one of your sons it's going to be heaven or hell which one are you going to spend the rest of your immortal life with and she said I want to go to heaven with you and I led my real mother to Christ. This is Pastor Ken Strong from Father's Arms Fellowship. I hope you enjoyed this testimony of Gary Wood when he came to visit Father's Arms Fellowship back in 1995. Gary has a new book out called A Place Called Heaven. If you'd like to get a copy of that, you could uh, write us here at Father's Arms Fellowship or you could write directly to Gary Wood, 13507 Eldridge Villa, Sugarland, Texas, 77478, or call Gary at 281-491-4836. God bless you this morning, and I hope you enjoyed our broadcast and this special testimony. If you don't have a church that you go to on a regular basis, we'd like to invite you to come down and visit us at Father's Arms Fellowship, a place where we still preach salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, where we still preach heaven, where we still preach hell, where we still preach the reality of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. Get up and come and visit us at 1400 Main in Scott City. Until next week, remember there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun.